This is Optimal Finance Daily, Episode 133, Get Rich With Profitable Leisure Time, by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Finance Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in personal finance five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dan Warren. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Optimal Finance Daily, where I read to you from some of the very best personal finance blogs on the planet, and I do it every Monday through Friday here on the show. Now, before we get into today's post, I do want to mention that today is the very last day to join our mailing list if you want to be eligible for a raffle that we hold each and every month. We're raffling off a book by The Minimalists, so if you want a chance to win that, plus get three spreadsheets, a video tutorial, and more, Come on by oldpodcast.com and enter your email address. Or a nice fast way to join is to just text the word financial to the number 44222. That's text the word financial to 44222. And today is the last day before the book giveaway, so I will give you a little reminder at the end of this show as well. But for now, let's hear from Mr. Money Mustache as we optimize your life. Get Rich With Profitable Leisure Time by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com Here at Mr. Money Mustache, the word leisure seems to come up quite a bit. This is not only because it is a classic and amusing old-fashioned word, much like fancy, but also because it is at the core of what we are promoting. It represents the freedom to do things that make you happy. But in our rich society, leisure time has become confusingly mixed with massive spending. Partly because it is a natural human instinct to show off one's power and wealth, and partly because millions of clever companies are advertising to us every day that we need to buy their products in order to enjoy leisure time. So let's break it down logically. When you are not at work, you need to do something with your time. The possibilities are endless. You can eat and sleep and watch TV, which are very low-cost activities, but they can be depressing in large doses. So many higher-achieving people take it up a notch and actually get off the couch. They hop into their cars and head out to the shopping mall, the restaurant, the golf course, or the ski resort. Some hitch the power boat or the trailer full of ATVs to the back of their full-size pickup and head for the lake or the mountains. The added challenge of any of these activities over watching TV is invigorating, and it helps to make these people happy. Leisure. The only problem is that expensive leisure activities like these will burn off your money mustache not to mention the polar ice caps, faster than you can say Louis Vuitton. What if there were a way to get the same happiness out of different activities? What if we thought about our leisure time as a blank slate on which to paint a picture of happiness, instead of just a clean lake through which to drive our motorboat? It is easier than it sounds. The key is to make a list of all the things you think you might enjoy doing. I'll try it right now on myself. Learning to fly an airplane. Playing in the sparkling glacier-fed local creek with my son. Surfing on Kauai's North Shore. Carving through canyons on a silent bicycle. Downhill mountain bike riding at a ski resort. Renovating my own kitchen. Picking out a new outfit at a high-end men's store. Planting a garden. Carving through canyons on a sporty motorcycle. Canoeing in the local lakes. Mountain bike riding in the mountains at the edge of town. All of the things above sound fun to me. But now I can sort the list based on how expensive they are. Cheapest ones first. Playing in the sparkling glacier-fed local creek with my son, zero dollars. Carving through canyons on a silent bicycle, zero to ten dollars if you break up the cost of bike ownership across many rides. Canoeing in the local lakes, zero to ten dollars. Mountain bike riding in the mountains at the edge of town, five bucks to cover round-trip car mileage. Planting a garden, hundred dollars a year for plants and materials, averaging about two dollars per hour of gardening. Renovating my own kitchen, $4,000 of materials, but actually a negative cost if you do a good job and eventually sell your house. Carving through canyons on a sporty motorcycle, $100 if you average out motorcycle ownership costs and gas. Downhill mountain bike riding at a ski resort, $100 for transportation and lift tickets. Picking out a new outfit at a high-end men's store, $400? Surfing on Kauai's North Shore, $200 a day. Learning to fly an airplane, $300 a day. Wow, reviewing the list, I see that there are already more than enough activities in the first half of that list to use up all my free time. 
but they are just as much fun to me as the expensive ones at the end of the list, especially since I like things that are peaceful and give my mind a rest. And if you care at all about the earth, there are obvious advantages too. Many people where I live in Colorado have mountain activities as their default or only leisure activity. They typically visit sites that are 100 miles into the mountains, away from the cities at the base of the mountains where we live. At the IRS standard rate of 50 cents per mile, they are spending $100 per weekend on transportation on top of a restaurant meal or two, various outdoor gear purchases, ski passes in the winter, etc. The average mountainist probably spends $250 a month on the mountain habit. Let's compare a mountainist to a money mustachist. The MM goes deep into the mountains only four times per year, but really makes the most of it those four times. For the rest of her outdoor leisure, she enjoys the closer locations that require minimal driving and no overnight condo rentals. Her average mountain costs are $50 a month. This $200 a month savings becomes $35,400 after 10 years with compounding. Yet both of these people get outdoors every weekend, enjoying amazing scenery and fresh air that would make most of the world's population jealous. As an expansion of this idea, consider hobbies that actually earn you money. If you like renovating or gardening, blogging to a big audience, or selling stuff on eBay, you can actually reverse the treadmill of leisure spending. For example, over a five-year period in the early 2000s, I spent about a third of my weekends remodeling my first home. It was incredibly fun, and it got me started on the path to more serious house-building work. But it also helped increase the value of this house after subtracting materials costs by about $50,000. I also moved out of this house and rented it for five additional years, which brought some appreciation. All told, this hobby brought in about $120,000 over 10 years, and it provided countless hours of entertainment, which could have been spent in more costly ways like shopping or airplane flying. The mountains are amazingly beautiful, but so are so many other things, including the feeling of waking up on a Monday morning and realizing you don't have to go to work unless you want to, today or any other day. So, make your own leisure list. You just listened to the post titled Get Rich With Profitable Leisure Time by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. And once again today is the very last day before our drawing to win the book Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life by the Minimalists, who you hear regularly here on Optimal Finance Daily. So if you want a chance to win that book, plus get some free helpful spreadsheets from us, come by oldpodcast.com and simply enter your email address. You'll become part of our mailing list and you'll be signed up for all those uh, free goodies. Or once again, you can text the word financial to the number 44222 and that's another quick way to join. It's all free and it's a great way to show that you like what you are hearing from us. And that's going to do it for episode 133. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when we'll have a post from Money Mini Blog. See you there, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from amazing bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.